Welcome to Dikidoku, the channel which focuses on quantum games which let you contribute to science. A great example of this is the game Quantum Moves, which was developed a few years ago by a team called Science at Home at the University of Aarhus. Using data from the game, they were able to generate some great scientific results which were recently published in the journal Nature. If you're not a scientist, you probably won't know how awesome that is, but it's pretty awesome. You can still contribute, and you can also play their other games which you can find on their website. And you can find the link to the website in the links below. But this is about quantum moves, so let's play. If we just start on the first level, what we see is basically this, this bucket which we can move around, and in that bucket is what looks like some sort of liquid sloshing about. But this isn't any ordinary liquid. What this actually is, is it's a description of an atom. There is an atom and that atom is in a specific state and we want to move the atom from here into this target region. And we want to keep it in the same state. So this liquid is a quantum description of where the atom is. Because in quantum mechanics, atoms aren't in one specific place but they're in some sort of uncertain region. And we need to get it into this target region with as high a prob probability as possible and also as high a probability that it's in the right state as possible. The probability that we had was 76.2%, um, which is not too bad, and we did that in a time which uh, also wasn't too bad. Uh, we got two stars. If we got three stars, then obviously it would be even better. So I'm telling you about all the quantum mechanics, but you don't need to know any of that. It's just moving around this weird sloshy liquid. You get to know how it uh, reacts when you move it, and you, you can easily uh, manipulate this thing. So this is actually, this well is created by lasers in a laboratory, but you don't have to know anything about the lasers, you just pull it around and um, do the best you can. Now actually what we would need is a method that we can get this up to a, a hundred percent. So something tiny, something like 81 percent is not good enough. But you don't have to worry about that as a human, you just do as good as you can and then there are computer programs which can take your result and make it better. So if a computer is going to do it anyway, what's the point of a human? Well, they have uh, looked at methods which just use a computer program to try and find a good method, and they found pretty good methods. But using this game, they've looked at taking a human solution and then improving it with a computer, and they find that that does better than the computer ever did alone. So by finding great methods, you can really contribute to how they tune their lasers in the lab. You're telling them how to tune their lasers. And that is pretty awesome. So not only do you contribute to science, you will intuitively learn something about quantum mechanics as well. Because this, uh, you have to log in to contribute, but I'm not going to do that during this video. Uh, you will learn some intuition about quantum mechanics just from the way this, this liquid goes, because it doesn't act like any liquid that you're used to and you will get some idea about wave function from this not a great deal you know you're not gonna you're not gonna play this game and uh, then go and pass an exam in um, quantum mechanics but you will learn something about it and specifically if you look at the examples where you have the tunnel here we've got a bucket with some liquid in, but we're not allowed to move this one. We move this one here. We can make it, say, uh, bigger, and then by a, the weird effect of quantum tunneling, the uh, liquid goes from one to the other. So by working out how to best do this tunneling, you can try and get a good fidelity and do it in as quick a time as possible, and awesomeness will happen. So, for example, we can move this up and tunnel it over, and then take that there, and well, my fidelity wasn't so great, but it'll do. Back to the title screen, so we can play the specific level, which was used in the paper. So here we have the atom over in the well on the right, and we have to pick it up and take it over to the target zone. Slow and steady, wins the race. And also in the paper, 
They said if you shake it a bit, that helps. So let's give it a go. Now I've got an 11% fidelity there. That was pretty terrible. Shake, shake. See, it's, it's difficult for me. I know the physics. I've got a degree in physics. I've got a PhD in quantum computation related stuff. I can do all of the calculations relating to this game. I could make the game, well, at least I could do the science bits of it, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know what the best solution is. I'm not actually very good at playing the game, but normal people that have no idea about the quantum stuff are good at playing the game. And that's one of the great things about this project and other projects like it. They take the science and wrap it up in a way that normal people can do it better than science people. So you can come over here, not worry a thing about atoms or lasers or fidelities, and you can do much better than me. In fact, I have my own game, Dikadoku, and I invented a two-player version of that yesterday. I was playing it with my wife. She has, a P she has a degree, but in astrophysics, not real physics, and she has no PhD, and yet she beat me. Every time we played, she beat me. So there you go. You are awesome. You are a genius. You can help science. And one of the ways you can do that is by playing quantum moves or other games by science at home. So try them out. Give them a download and have fun. Thanks for listening.